Okay, everybody, welcome back to my my YouTube channel. Those that are watching by Facebook and Instagram, we appreciate everybody. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell, turn on your notifications, leave a comment. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a question in the comment section below. Okay, so what we're gonna go over, or hopefully, hopefully this is a brief video, nothing too, too crazy. But I wanna go over just real quick how to choose a puppy. And I'm not necessarily meaning a puppy based off of features. I'm talking about how do you pick a puppy based off characteristics, temperament, so forth. What we have to be very, very, very careful is that we do not choose a puppy based off of looks. And unfortunately, I see that a lot, a whole lot. I see people, families choosing puppies off of looks. Not to say that looks are not important because you wanna get the look that you're looking for. You wanna get the characteristics in their build that they're looking for. But however, that is not the first ingredient of choosing a puppy. So what I'm doing here on this video is number one, we're gonna go over um, some training ideas that what I'm doing to understand the personality of this puppy. So you're gonna see that firsthand. The second thing is I wanna talk about is how to choose a puppy off a of character. Now this little puppy here is a male puppy. He's a boy, okay? Yellow male. He is majority an English dog. Okay, so he's bred with a lot of English and a little bit of American in there. So if you wanna know the percentage, it'd be 75, 25. Now, what I'm looking for in this puppy is if I have a family and calls me and says, I want to know what his person personality is like. I want to be able to explain this personality. Now, I'm not going to know his personality unless I spend time with him. So, as you can tell, I'm about 15 feet away from him, okay? Now, the first little idea that you can use when choosing a puppy for you is understanding how much fear they may have and not by causing them to fear what i mean by that is is are they timid are they cautious or do they act now think later type of dog okay and when we do this that will give us an idea what kind of dog we're dealing with on a, on a base level here so just to kind of give you an example of what I'm talking about. Pup, 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 pup. You see how this guy is leaving me? You, you know what that tells me? Number one, he's gonna go to the bathroom way over there. He's already circling. He's gonna go to the bathroom, so we'll give him some privacy to do that. I don't feel like showing that on the video anyway. I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure nobody wants to see that. Let him do his thing. Now, he is leaving me, okay? And he's already done. Come on, pup, pup, come on, pup, pup. But see how willing he is? You know, some families would have, would have scratched this guy off right off the bat and said, you know what, that's a dominant dog. He just left me. Look at here. He comes right back to me, okay? And if you notice in the just the previous four or five minutes we've been talking, he'll wander off but he comes back and checks with me. So you say, well, what kind of personality is that? And what kind of dog is that? Well, number one, if you're gonna do a hunting situation, that would be great because the dog is independent enough to work out from you and to check back with you. That is an ideal situation. Is a companion dog, a pet, a family dog. Is there something wrong with a personality like that? No, you know why? Because he's independent and but yet he knows who the boss is, okay? He knows who's in charge. 
So this dog here is not necessarily the dominant dog out of the litter because he'll leave and come back. If he was a dominant alpha dog, he would take off and he would go back out to the, the shed out there and he would not come back to me because he he's the boss and he's the dominant one. But see, he stays close. He ran off to do his business because another dog went to the bathroom over there. And so he smelt that, went over there to, to do that, come back here to me and see how close he's staying by me. Again, this is no training on his part. This is just, or my part as far as that's concerned, this is just his natural behavior, okay? So if you get a dog that is, is, is more of your personality, okay? Now we're gonna talk about choosing a dog off of personality and that's what you should be choosing a dog off of number one you already found an awesome breeder number two you already know that you wanted a yellow male okay so don't go into a breeder's facility not knowing if you want a male or female because you will be persuaded very easily and the breeder should walk you through that and i'm going to do that right now with you okay so if you have a dot if you are a dominant person and you think you can handle a male dog because typically they're going to be more dominant, uh, dominant as the down the road here. I'm gonna see if I can get his attention. See if he can come back. Pup, 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 pup. Come here, come here, pup, pup. come here, come here, big guy. Come here, come here, big guy. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Come here, come here. Oh, that's a good job. Good boy, pup, pup. Good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Got to get make sure he gets a good reward for listening and coming back to me. Okay, so you say I'm a dominant person and, and, and I can handle a male dog, but yet this is a family pet. So you might be dominant, but you have a five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old girl, your daughter, that is very, very submissive. Or perhaps you have a a boy, six, seven, eight year old boy, never been around dogs before. This is the first family pet. And he's also very submissive. Or maybe hasn't even got to that that time of his, of his life where he's just kind of, you know, goes with the flow, never been around a dog. So just because it's good for your personality, you need to pick out a puppy that suits the youngest and typically the female gender of your family. So let me restate that. You wanna pick out a puppy that is typically, so if you have three children or two children and you have a female, a little girl, and she's five years old and she's the youngest, you're gonna to wanna to pick a puppy for her personality, not your own, not your son's, if, especially if they're older, okay? If the, if the son is younger, then again, pick it out for his personality not for your personality you say well why is that well because if the little boy is afraid of the dog the dog is going to sense that in his personality okay and we don't want that the dog will pick that out right off the bat and those that have experienced this you know exactly what i'm talking about that dog will come in and it's 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 nature it's the dog's natural nature to pick off the weakest, the weakest link, so to speak. Okay, I, I say that respectfully. Um, what they're doing is, is they're trying to figure out who's the strongest, who's the most dominant, and they will choose and start picking on the children. They're not doing it on purpose. They need to be taught not to do this, but they will do this. Come on, pup, pup. Come on, come on. Come here. Come on. Now see how I got his interest and come back to me? But he's also showing, come on, pup, pup, come on, come on. He's also showing me that he can walk away from me and keep going. And if I get behind him and I walk behind him, he'll walk away from me, okay? So he's showing me a little bit of signs that he is a very, very confident dog, okay? But he's also showing me signs that he's submissive. This dog does not know the word come. That's why I'm using different noises, different sounds, and it's, it's curiosity is what's getting them. Come here. Good boy, that's a good boy. Come, 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 come. This dog does not know what come means, okay, folks? He's coming to me out of curiosity, 
and he's submitting his will to me, okay? He's a confident dog. That's why he can walk away from me, okay? But he's not the alpha dog. You can see that in his personality. So he looks at me when I make a noise. What's that, what's that? I'm checking it out, I'm checking it out. Very confident, but not necessarily alpha, okay? So we can see that in that personality. He's sitting here because he doesn't know where to go. Come here, come on, let's go, pup, pup. Come on, there you go, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. Very playful, very playful. Well-tempered dog, very well-tempered puppy. Okay, this little guy would be a candidate for, if I was choosing at a 10 week old puppy, this is how old he is, and I would be looking for this guy for a candidate, okay? He's very confident puppy, but yet he surrenders to me, okay? That's a very good uh, indication uh, for a puppy that we're looking for, for a uh, um, therapy situation. Come here, pup, pup. come here. Okay, so back to picking out a puppy on personality. Now, see how he's once he's playing, he feels comfortable, but he'll walk away from me. Okay, so we gotta understand that. Now, the puppy that is in the back of the the group, you got a group of ten puppies. Okay, and in this little puppy, say there's you know there's ten puppies right here, and he's number ten, and he's in the back. And he's very timid, laid back. And everybody says, well, you don't want that puppy because he's timid. But what if that's your personality? Okay. What if that's your personality? That laid back puppy will learn to trust you, will learn to be with you. And if, if you are extremely laid back family, that might be the temperament that you're going to want. Okay. Next thing is the puppy in the middle that's looking around and observing everything. That's this guy right here. He's not strong enough just to bolt off, okay? But yet he's not, he, he, he wants to, to, to explore. So he's the guy that is in the middle and he looks around to see what's going on. And after he figures that's okay, come here, pup, pup. Come here, pup, pup. Come here, come here. Brrr. Come here. Come up, buddy. Come here. Come here, big guy. Come here. Brrr. Come here. Oh. Oh, he's fine going back to the shed now. So, very, very, you know, the, the puppy that's in the middle, he's the one that's confident just enough to look around, check things out to make sure they're safe before he goes and explores, okay? The next one is the puppy that comes to you. Now, a lot of us will, will uh, go online and we hear the idea that you want the puppy to choose you out. Well, if I would say that, that, that that's a bad idea, um, that's not 100% the truth. Sometimes puppies can pick us out. There are moments that puppies can pick us out, okay? And, and that's, a good, that's a good thing when a puppy will truly pick us out. I've heard story after story after story where the puppy chose the family, okay? But that happens usually, let me give you an example. You have three puppies that you're looking at and you hold the one puppy, the two puppy, the third puppy, and then you put the puppies away or put them over somewhere and that one puppy just keeps coming back to you, okay? It's not the first puppy that came to you in the group, but it's a puppy that keeps coming back to you. Okay, so basically what you do is you you put the puppy away or you play, you, you know, you was playing with that one puppy and you put that puppy away and you grabbed another puppy, but it's on the other side of the room. So the breeder takes that puppy, puts it back with the litter on the other side of the room, brings you another puppy. Okay, and then all of a sudden that other puppy that you had, maybe, maybe second or first or third. He comes back to you, okay? He comes back to you and he keeps coming back to you. That's a good example of a puppy choosing you. All right, now, if you walk in the room and there's a pen and there's eight puppies in there and you choose the first puppy, 
and you choose the first puppy that comes to you, you most likely just chose the most dominant puppy of the whole litter because he was the first one to come up to you. He has the most courage to come up to you and that is not 100% what you want unless that's your personality, okay? So I'm not gonna get this drawn out because this can get very boring, but try to hesitate if you can to choose a puppy just off of looks. Go off of the personality of the entire family, okay, as a whole. All right, now, what I'm doing here is, some people ask me, how do you get puppies used to uh, riding in a vehicle, or riding in your gator, or riding in your mule, or your UTV, ATV, okay? This is how we do it. I've got little doors on here that keep the puppy in there, okay? They're safe in there, they won't get hurt. Uh, they can go back and forth and different things like that. Now, once they're in here for a little bit, I'll turn it on and so they can hear the fuel pump working. This is, has an electric fuel pump. They'll hear the, the fuel pump going, okay? Now, once that goes for a little bit, stick this thing in neutral. It won't let me do it in neutral because it's parked on a hill. There we go. Now watch his face. So he's looking around, he's looking back at me. He's not really sure what that is, what the noise is. But now see, he can feel the vibration of that motor in the vehicle, okay? And I just leave him in there just for a little bit. And I can open the door and he can come out at will, okay? Anytime he wants. And this is what I do for all my puppies when we're gonna take them in the mule here. Okay, so here's my mule. And I'll come around on this side. See how he already went out? See? Come up, up, up. Come up, up, up. Good boy. So they can get out. And the reason I leave the door open is because just like with the water, and when we train with the water, if they can know how to get out of, of, a, of a mule like that, and we're gonna do a video a little bit more detailed than what we're just doing now on how to do that uh, in a slow, he's already been in it, so it doesn't really bother him. But I just wanna kinda give you an idea on that. Okay, so you got the puppy in the back, you got the puppy in the middle, and you got the puppy that comes right up to you. That is the alpha dog, almost guaranteed, almost every time. You do not want that dog for therapy, and you do not want that dog uh, unless you are an alpha person and your whole family has experience with an alpha dog, okay? You've had a male dog before. So, something to consider on that, all right? So, come here, pup up. Come here, come here. Hey, 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 hey. You know what I just thought of? I'm gonna get a tennis ball and see if we can see more personality in him by doing that. Now, I walked away from him. Now, I wanna see when I, when I would turn around and I show you guys where he's at, I wanna see where he's at to where I am now. And I'm not sure, here we go. Now I got my tennis ball. Check this out. There he is. So you see how he can walk away from me? But when I walk away from him, he comes with me because he's insecure about exactly where he's located. And he's by himself. So you see how he's got the confidence to walk away by himself, but he don't have enough confidence to stay away. Hey. What's that? What's that? See how he just went and checked that out? Very confident dog. Very confident dog. Hey, pup, pup. What is it? What is it? What is it, pup, pup? What is it? What is it? Come here. Go get that. Go get that. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Now, when you get a puppy that does this, he grabs the ball and runs off. You don't want to chase him because you'll start a game. Okay, so I'll just walk up nonchalantly. Hey, pup, pup, hey, pup, pup. But see, if he runs around and I keep approaching him, 
what's going to happen is that's going to be a uh, that's going to become a game to him, okay? And it's just it's natural for every puppy. Now look at here. See how he runs back? He runs back to me because I'm in charge, and he won't get to play with me unless he comes back to me. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. So you see the personality there. He's laying down, playing in the grass, cooling off, but he wants to be beside me, okay? This dog is not an alpha dog. You know he's got confidence to run off. Hey, hey, psst, 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 psst. hey, psst. what's that? Go get that. So this guy will be most likely um, in our training program. I do got a family that's interested in him in, in a different situation, so we're just waiting to hear back from them. But if they would choose to wait or move on to another situation this guy is going to be um, in our training program and we do this with every puppy we got to understand what their temperament is I want to understand their personality because it helps me decide on what to push forward in how and what to push forward with this dog okay so you know this dog likes to stuff like to have stuff in his mouth okay and you know this would be a great dog. You know, everybody wants a dog for retrieving and so forth like that. But maybe, hey, hey, maybe this guy would work good for some, some, you know, like a police dog, a narcotic dog, drug dog. Um, he's very mouthy. Um, I'm not going to play tug of war with him because I don't do that kind of stuff unless I know he's going to be going for a drug dog. He's confident. That shows That shows good there too. But yet he surrenders and he wants to be beside me. Okay, so that's a good personality. So anyway, I'm not gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. Hopefully that helps you guys out. If you got any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you got any thoughts, please leave in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Turn uh, click the bell, turn your subscriptions, subscriptions, turn your notifications on. I would really appreciate that. And um, if you want a little bit more detail about how to choose a puppy. We can go into more detail about that. We'll do another video if you want. Uh, let me know. But this, I believe, will help you out a lot on seeing the puppy, taking them outside if you can at, at the breeder's facility or in the building or their home, where they're at. Get them out. Don't treat it like a Walmart or a Target and walk in there thinking you're going to choose the puppy in two, three, four minutes and walk out of there, okay? Most families that are here picking out their puppies they are here for an average of three hours i've had families here for as long as five hours um some a little longer some a little shorter but very seldom do i have a puppy here or a family here for 15 minutes and then they're gone i mean that hardly never happens it's happened in the past um just because of pre-screening the puppies and so forth and there's exemptions to that but very very seldom okay and as a breeder or a trainer we should be very very careful in allowing families to come in and choosing puppies in 15 minutes that's dangerous okay so not only does it allow the breeder to understand the family more while they're on the facility but the family can understand the breeder more while they're there at the facility okay it's kind of hard, hard to hide stuff if they are hiding stuff. It's hard to do that when the family's there for such a long time. Uh, you can build a relationship with the breeder, and the breeder can build a relationship with you as, the, as their family, as their client, and then you can understand the puppy that you're buying more. Um, and that's critical, very critical, okay? So you'll learn to watch his, his, his position of his body. You know, like this little guy is using his nose in a big big way okay that's that's good i like that and again it depends on what we're going to put him in there put him in for and what he's going to do that's going to dictate on what we do with his training okay so i like to use what's what the dog naturally is good at okay this dog is naturally good at grabbing the ball this dog is natural naturally good naturally good at just you know he's confident very confident dog now see how i walked up to him he took off now i'm going to try that again and see if he takes off from me again as I try to bend down and pick up the ball. Okay, he let go. Okay, come on, pup, pup. Come on, pup, pup. Hey, pss, pss, pss. go get that. Go get that. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. 
That's a good boy. Now, see how he's chewing on that? We don't want that to happen. See how he, he wants to chew on the ball, stuff like that. We don't want that. Okay, we don't want him to lay in the toy and sit there and start chewing on it. That's not good. Hey, hey. Go get that pup up. Go get that pup up. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. He thinks he's so big. <laughs> he loves that. Good job, big guy. Good job. See how he's got it now? And he's starting to gnaw on it and bite on it. We don't want that out. Good boy. Hey, pss, pss, pss. go get that. Oh, that's a good boy. Good boy. So now the the question before I uh, before we shut this down. There's gonna be a question. If I have children, would this be a good puppy for me? If I have young children, would this be a good dog for me for my first puppy? My first family puppy, okay? I promise you 99% breeders, or I'll, actually I'll, I'll give the benefit of the doubt, I'll say 90% of breeders. If you call them, they're gonna say that this if this is your first time buying a puppy, this is gonna be a great little puppy because Oh, he loves playing and he's so playful and this and that and other. I'm telling you right now, this is not a puppy you want if this is your first puppy. And you definitely don't want this puppy if you are, if you have little children. Hey. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? You definitely don't want this puppy if you have young children that has never been around a dog before in their entire lives and you want to get a puppy for your family, okay? This is not your puppy. Because if you noticed, everywhere he goes, he uses his paws, he scratches at it, he's chewing on the ball, and this, that, and other, okay? His mind is very, very alert. And his mind is going a lot, okay? This would be the guy that your little girl's walking through there with her Easter dress on, and he goes up there and grabs the back of it. This would be the puppy that would do that. This would be the puppy that would go and grab a pair of your son's brand new basketball shoes and carry them across the room and chew them. Now, properly trained puppy would be no problem in any situation, but we have to have the puppy properly trained, okay? So this little guy is gonna turn out be perfectly fine. And this is why I train dogs. But if you take him home at an eight week, nine week old, 10 week puppy, and you just kind of introduce him to the house and you don't do a formal training on this dog, you're gonna have your hands that you, uh, your hands full and you're gonna be in a real big situation because you think he's cute and you're going off the of looks and not personality and you're gonna get your family in a big situation and you're gonna have a an extreme, extremely big bill on the training side of it because you're gonna have to have a professional trainer to get this guy back aligned and teach him who's boss and teach him manners, okay? So hopefully that's helpful. If you need some more instructions, more ideas about how to choose a puppy for you guys, again, what it all boils down to, and I always tell families this, I don't care if you buy a puppy for me or not, is getting the right puppy for you. I have other breeders, um, you know, that they will adopt their puppies out to the families that I talk to over the phone. Okay, I wanna educate, I wanna help. I'm doing this for the dog, the bettering of the dog and for the family. For you that are watching this video, I'm doing this for you and for the most importantly, the dog, okay? Because if we can place our dogs in homes that are better fit and we can have trained dogs for our families and have the support for the families, we're gonna have less dogs in shelters, in the humane societies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm doing my part in this. I, I hope that you will do your part in this. So subscribe, share this video so we can do this together. Take a stand and, and get these, these dogs, keep them out of the shelters. Keep them out of there. Now, we're just doing the first level of this, okay? As a breeder, as a trainer, I'm doing my part. But there's a whole new aspect, not new, a, a whole other aspect on the breeding side as far as how to maintain that as well. I'm just doing my little part. So help me out, subscribe to my channel, share this video, turn, click the bell, turn your notifications on. And if you have any questions, you can contact me through my email. 
You can get my phone number off my Facebook page. You could text me. You could call me. I welcome that. Until the next video.